Are we live? Okay. We're live. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. We are late. I'm very sorry about that. Um, it has been a crazy day today. And uh, Matthew and I have been working at the restaurant since 8 o'clock this morning. And we have, I should probably take this off so you can hear me. How's that? Can you hear me better now? <laughs> All right. And that was my timer. That's good news. Um, yeah, we have... Okay, I think I think you need to stay on that side of the table, okay? <laughs> there we go. There you go. Yeah, you can stay there. That's fine. Now we get front row seats. We have some very anxious kids that are hungry. <laughs> uh, we have a very special treat today. Uh, we are doing Christmas treats. And uh, if you saw our Facebook photo, you wondered why on earth green soup had anything to do with Christmas treats. But, you know, for Christmas, you have to have red and green, right? <laughs> so today we're going to have red and green. The red being the treats green and the green being the soup. <laughs> That's good favorite colors. So I am really excited. Um, but Daniel, can you open this with a word of prayer? Are you sharing this right now? I will. Okay. Just a second. Lexi? Lexi? You can ignore the timers for a second, because I'm going to bring those out here. Okay. Okay. All right, are we ready? Yes. Well, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer together. Father in heaven, thank you for this time that we have this evening, and uh, for all those who can be here and those who can be watching online. For this special holiday season, I pray that you'll bless this food now and bless this class as we share together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Me too. Um, so if you guys want to go ahead and try some soup, you have to try a little bit. I don't I care if you don't soup. like it, but you have to try just a little bit. What have we got here? Whoa, look at that. Look at that. Is that a cake? Three cakes? No, it's two. Pretty the, good. Third, the third one's still in the oven. Looks pretty good. This is the green pea soup. Green pea soup. And some crackers. Looking good, looking good. So what do you think about it? So, um, green pea soup is not to be mixed up with split pea soup because green pea soup is made out of frozen green peas, not the green. dried split peas. Green. So uh, this is actually one of the soups that uh, my mother made for me when I was little, when I had braces. <laughs> because there wasn't a lot I could chew after I had my adjustment and all my mouth was askew and everything hurt. So uh, I hated split pea soup as a kid but I liked green pea soup. So she would make either green pea soup or she would make potato soup and she'd blend it up and uh, I ate a lot of it. <laughs> I haven't made it a lot recently. Um, so uh, the other night I was asking Daniel, I was like, I wanna do dessert, but I can't do a whole meal with this dessert. We gotta have something with the dessert. And uh, he's like, well, why don't you do a soup? And I'm thinking, I've done just about every soup. <laughs> But I haven't done green pea soup, so you got a new one tonight. Um, so green pea soup is very simple to make. Um, basically, you need some kind of uh, cream of some sort. Um, I need one more bowl. So I can wash the cashews. So I'll just need a bowl for this. Uh, I used a half a cup of cashews. Um, you can shrink that down if you want less nuts or um, less fat in it. You can also substitute with almonds. Uh, you can substitute with um, coconut cream or whatever. Thank you. Whatever cream you want to use. I'll work out much better. Um, but I used a half a cup of cashews. So I'm just going to wash them here. Ariel Hubbard says, soup looks yummy. Hi, Ariel. And Susie Vance says, hi, from Prescott, Arizona. 
Carly, you know you're almost close enough. You can just like come on over. We still have plenty of food. Yeah, come help us eat it. We have lots of food. Come help us. But I realize it is almost Christmas and everybody is really busy right now. So I appreciate those who actually came and, and pitched in and got put to work when they got here. We had some good helpers today. Okay, so we've got half a cup of cashews and then we're going to put in some water. Let's get a measuring cup here. Um, and we're just going to blend the cashews and water by themselves until they're nice and creamy. We want to make sure that's nice and smooth. This is our cream. Uh, like I said, you can use any kind of cream you want. If you'd rather use blended almonds or coconut cream or whatever kind of cream you want to put in there, soy milk or whatever. Um, take very much. In fact, this is probably a larger one than I want, but I don't have a knife. Can you grab me a knife? Oh, this will be small. Ariel, Ariel says, on my way. Yay! And then the only other thing that goes in is four cups of frozen peas. And you can see they're still frozen. <laughs> but if you're blending as small, you just blend up two at a time. Two cups at a time instead of all four at once. One's gonna melt it. The one's gonna melt it. Okay. Then I'm gonna need the blender. Okay. What's that? Ariel asks, are we going for a specific consistency or time to blend? Uh, just until it feel, the cashews feel smooth between your fingers. You want to make sure it's good and smooth. If it feels like sandpaper, you know it's not done yet. So now that I've got that in, there's one thing on the recipe that I forgot to add, and that is you'll need some more water to blend it. Um, I put in about a half cup more water to blend it. And you can always add more if it's too thick. Thank you very much. That is for me to check the other cake.
chunky, just blend it a little bit and you'll have like chunky pea soup. Um, if you want it creamy, you just blend it a long time until it's totally creamy. So you can adjust that part as long as your cream, your cashews are blended well, you can adjust the peas however you want. And then you just adjust the water and that's it. You just put it on the stove and you don't even have to cook it, you just warm it and it's ready to serve. Yeah, so exactly. I call that my five minute soup recipe. <laughs> when you eat something quick and fast and uh, you don't have a lot of time. And the great thing is the peas have lots of protein in them, uh, lots of nutrition. And um, so anyway, it's a great way to get your vegetables and have a very fast meal in five minutes. Something you could do. <laughs> There's more if you want more. So I'm not gonna heat this up because we still have some over there. If you don't wanna heat it up, you can just put it straight in the fridge and just heat it when you're ready to serve it. Yeah, because it's already cooked. Because it's already cooked. You don't have to cook the beans. So, yeah, very, very simple and easy. So, if you don't care to take that to the kitchen, um, either you or us or something, just put it in the jar and see what Okay, so that is the green pea soup. How'd you like that? <laughs> so, this recipe serves that one. Uh, what is over there? That whole pot was a double batch. So, um, how much was in that blender? Yeah, about six people if you do a cup each. Um, in our family, it would only serve like four of us, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> or two. <laughs> it might serve Daniel and I if we each eat two bowls. <laughs> how many crackers you have. That's right. It just depends on how many crackers or garlic toast or whatever, <laughs> salad or whatever else you have to stretch it out. <laughs> All right, so now I want to show you what you all want to see, and that is the dessert. Except, uh, it's supposed to be mine when you check the cake. Let me go check the cake demonstrate this. You want, you want to stay seated? Okay, so the first thing uh, it calls for is flour. And you'll notice if you total up the flour, it comes to three cups of flour. And if you turn on the back side, you'll see the gluten-free version of the same thing, uh, which is also three cups of flour plus um, a quarter cup of tapioca flour. So what I did, um, the lemon blueberry cake and the cranberry orange cake are the exact same cake. Okay, I think I it. <laughs> it took me a minute. I'm going to get Yes, so, um, and on the back, I just did the lemon blueberry because that's what you're actually going to eat. Right. But the, the only difference between the blueberry and the cranberry is that instead of blueberries, it has cranberries, okay. and instead of lemon zest, it has orange zest. Okay. Um, and then, of course, um, I will show you how to do the icing later. But yeah, otherwise they're the exact same cake. Okay, I'm with you now. So three cups of flour is what you want. My favorite ratio is one cup of oat flour, one cup of whole wheat pastry flour, and one cup of whole wheat flour. Uh, that's my favorite ratio. My favorite gluten-free ratio is one and a half cups of oat flour, which you can see there on the gluten-free and one and a half cups of sorghum flour, and then I just add a little bit of tapioca flour to that. Um, I made a mistake on what you're gonna eat, there's no tapioca in it, so we'll see if we like it better with or without. 
<laughs> if let's we like it without them, the tapioca flour becomes optional. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Um, so if you do not have whole wheat paste, pastry flour, then your substitute is one and a half cups of oat flour and one and a half cups of whole wheat flour. Um, so, and I've made it both ways. Uh, it works both ways. So um, I just ran out of whole wheat pastry flour as of today. So for the demo, I'm gonna have to do the one and a half cups of oat and one and a half cups of whole wheat because that's all I've got right now. I have to grind more pastry and I didn't have time for that tonight. Um, but as long as you have your three cups of flour, you can pretty much play around with whatever um, you want to do. So we've got flour and we've got sugar. Now when I measure, I measure weird. I always put the sugar in first, that way I can use the measuring cup <laughs> in the flour and not worry about contaminating anything. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So with the gluten-free, the only difference is the flour, otherwise it's the exact same recipe. Okay. There. There we go. So we're, gonna, we're putting in uh, two cups. This is organic sugar. And you can totally adjust this as you want. And then uh, I put my flour in next. So um, there are two ways. I'm gonna need another strainer because I had to use it to wash the dishes. Um, there are two ways to do oat flour. One is you can make the oat flour in a food processor, and one is you can make it in the Vitamix. If you make oat flour in the Vitamix, you don't have to worry about it. You can use it straight. Is there a little one that we can dry off? Yeah, just bring me a towel and we can dry it off. Because this is too big. Um, if you use the food processor, you have to strain, sift the oat flour. Because the food processor doesn't get it as fine as the Vitamix does. Um, so, here's my oat flour, which was made in the food processor. Yeah. I use it to wash cashews. Would you like to dry it off? Yeah. And I'm gonna wait for the sifter. So while they're doing that, I'll do the wheat flour. So this um, whole wheat flour that I use is the uh, white wheat, the prairie gold. Um, that is my favorite kind of wheat, especially for cakes and stuff like that. Do one and a half cups of that. And I want to say this cake recipe I have played with and experimented with. In fact, I think I've played and experimented with this recipe since um, I was uh, 19 years old, maybe 20. Thank you very much. Um, it has been a long time in coming to get it the way we liked it, which is why I haven't taught it in a class sooner. Um, but there are a few secrets that I have learned that I'm very, very thankful for um, that I will teach you today. So this is the oat flour. I'm just going to sift it. And I'm not going to sift it until like every last little bit comes through. I'm just going to get the bulk of it. Whatever I don't use, I usually just pour back into the jar and use it in muffins. <laughs> it just becomes a little extra brand in the muffins and doesn't hurt anything. But I did make the mistake one time of using a food processor oat flour without sifting it. And when we ate it, there were hard pieces in it. And it kind of tasted like an oatmeal cake. <laughs> it was really heavy with like, you know, these hard chunks in it. <laughs> and it had a weird texture. <laughs> I did that too because I was in a hurry. Yep. So, yeah, it does pay to sift it. <laughs> or like I said, throw in the Vitamix and then you don't have to worry about it. I would throw in the Vitamix tonight except um, my dry blender got washed and it's wet. So, that ended that idea. 
Okay, so we are going to put in... Now on the one and a half cups of flour, um, when I measure my flour, I gently pack it a little bit. So that's not fluffy cups, that's slightly packed. Give me a recipe too. Alright, nobody can help me at the recipe if they're not looking at it. Oh, that's <laughs> All right. Okay, so I've got flour and sugar in here. What goes next? And everyone watching online can help too, right? right. Yeah, you should have the recipe Why too. Why don't you just eat ground? I think I need a grinder, don't I? White chia seed, what else goes in there? Uh, golden flax seed. Golden flax seed. We're going to grind both of those, right? Both of those are two Yes, so we're going to grind them together because when you grind flax seed with chia, it doesn't clump so bad when you grind it together. Thank you. Um, I'm going to need the extension board too. So, in our little thing here, 
We're going to put in two tablespoons of flax. And I'm using golden flaxseed. And we're going to use the white chia. Now you can do it with regular flax and black chia, but you will see it. <laughs> um, it's not the end of the world, okay? Like if that's all you got, that's all you got, just use it. Um, if you're doing a carob cake, it doesn't matter because you won't see it at all. <laughs> but on my lighter cakes, I try to do the lighter colored seeds. So in our house, everything that I've been baking No, my last batch of flaxseed had weed seeds in it, <laughs> but I've never had sand in my flaxseed. Yeah, it's very gritty. Ooh. I had a batch of salt that was sandy. That was nasty. Yeah, I thought that's where it was coming from at first. But I from the salt. Out. Interesting. The Himalayan sea salt? Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, the real salt is the worst. Yeah, real salt has the most Especially dirt in it. stuff that came from the edges of the mine. <laughs> But uh, we haven't had any trouble with our Himalayan salt, thankfully. I wonder how you would separate the sand. What if you I don't shake know it or it. sift it? If you sift it? I don't know. Let's see it. So you can see how how fine it is. You want it super fine. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna put that in. Okay. So we have flax and chia. Now what? Baking powder. Baking powder. Okay. How much? I know. It says baking powder. We need four te two, four teaspoons. Four teaspoons of baking powder. All right. them to put liquid in their dry ingredients. So um, I'm just gonna mix it in there with my dry stuff. Okay. So now our dry ingredients are mixed. So what does it say goes in here next? It says next we need a cup of frozen or fresh cranberries. Okay, so we're going to put in the cranberries in now. And we're just going to mix those into the dry. Got my spoon here. Nice, like a sword. Alright, so we are going to zest this orange and uh, as we can scrape the orange. Please 
So the orange zest is basically just that orange stuff off the outside of your orange. And that's where all your orange oil is. So basically this adds natural orange essential oil inside your zest. Now I don't have one of these fancy things at home. So I just use a little miniature grater. It just takes longer. <laughs> Yeah, you can pretty much use anything that will grate it fine. You just need it really small. Most most of your um, graters, you know, the, the hand graters that have the, the multiple sides on it, usually have a zester side. And uh, so I've used that at home. But this goes so much faster. <laughs> tablespoons it is. I just simply do two oranges. Are you going to use the oranges that we tested? We sure are. We make orange juice with it. You put the orange juice in the cake? The orange juice is going in the frosting. So you can make orange flavored frosting? You can make orange flavored frosting that way. That's right. That sounds good. <laughs> Like lemon cake, then you just use lemon juice for the icing instead of orange. We need to make like a three layer cake or four layer since all we have is we don't even have to make it. Yeah, we were debating whether to do the lemon cake or the cranberry cake for. The demo, and uh, we decided that cranberries fit better with Christmas, so we decided to demo the cranberry one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't do the cranberry one for the gluten free. I should have. All right. So there is our zest. Aim it over here so I can. See it. You see it? I see it. Sliding down the bowl. Yep. Yep. So we're just gonna throw that zest in the flour and I just mix it directly into the flour. That way I can break up the clumps and get it well mixed. today so I'm gonna leave that out that's why it's optional but it does give more of an orange flavor if you want more orange uh, so what's after that uh, one fourth uh, one fourth a cup of white olive oil optional okay and that is completely optional if you want if you're trying to do oil free you can leave the oil out entirely um, it just makes it slightly heavier that's the only thing I've noticed it's still moist without the oil um, so the, the texture is pretty much the only thing I've noticed. It's just a little bit heavier. Okay, so oil and what else? Is, uh, the next thing on the list is three-fourths a cup, three-fourths a cup of applesauce dash dip. Okay, so I want to tell you how I make my applesauce. I use homemade. I don't use store-bought applesauce. In fact, I don't even use my home can. Um, what I do is I take apples like we did for the apple crisp last month, which you guys missed, didn't you? Um, so you take your apples and cut them, quarter them, peel them, whatever you're gonna do, uh, put them in a pot, and I just put a couple tablespoons of apple juice concentrate and a few tablespoons of water just to keep it from burning. And I basically steam them 
until they're soft and then mash them with a potato masher until they're chunky. And then these pimento jars here, these seven ounce pimento jars, if you fill it with headspace for the freezer, it comes out to almost exactly three quarters of a cup of applesauce. So we just, I just take my batch and I divide it in my pimento jars and throw it in the freezer. Whenever I wanna make a cake, I have the exact amount of applesauce that I need to use. Um, Victoria was very kind to help me with uh, making applesauce on Thursday. Um, was it last Thursday? It was a week ago Thursday, I think it was. I don't know, I yeah. remember yesterday. Anyway, she was like, why are you making so many jars? Well, we've used four of them today. <laughs> um, plus, I also use them for my fruitcake. Fruitcake has the same applesauce in it. So, um, anyway, that is what this applesauce is. And uh, then I just dig it out and thaw it in hot water or whatever. I need to do a thaw it <laughs> so I can use it. So we have our applesauce, we have our oil. Now all this is going to go into our dry at the exact same time. So we just make sure we have everything ready. So what's the other wet ingredient? Uh, then, then you mix buttermilk separately. We got to make the buttermilk, right? So that's what this measuring cup is going to be. It's going to be the buttermilk. So Helga Jessen says, Merry Christmas, Christina. I'm following from Denmark. Hugs. Hi, Helga. I'm so glad you can watch us tonight. Merry Christmas to you. And Peter and Arlene Wanawalker say hello. Hi, Peter and Arlene. We're glad you can join us too. From, from Lydia Lidjul's account, it looks like. All right, so we've got our two cups of soy milk here. And then we're gonna put in what to make it into buttermilk? One what does it say? Uh, How are we gonna make this? Two cups of soy milk. Yeah, and then what? And then one tablespoon of lemon juice. Okay, I have lemon juice here. I have fresh squeezed lemon juice from the lemons. So I'm just gonna use that for today. Okay, it can be store-bought, it can be fresh or whatever. Just That's what sours our soy milk and what it does is it curdles it. Just like buttermilk. What's that? I don't know. I know lemon juice does and I know vinegar does, but I don't know if orange juice does. I don't know if it's acidic enough. I haven't tried it. So there is our buttermilk. So now we're ready, right? Yep. Oil, applesauce, buttermilk. Is that the only thing that goes in here now? Hey, yes. Did you put the oil in there? Okay, we haven't done it. We're going to pour it all at once. Huh. So I need a quarter cup measuring cup. I don't see that here. Under your bowl. Here you go, quarter cup. There's a quarter cup here? Find it right next to your bowl here. Ah, they can all see it and I can't. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to put the oil in first. We're going to put the applesauce in second. Add, oh, there's my tablespoon. Oh, just spilled it. Applesauce second. Um, Matthew, can you see if Lexi has any of my cake pans clean that I could pour this into a cake pan? Preferably the the um, bunt cake pan. If it's not clean, could you wash it? I don't have any more cake pans in the kitchen. <laughs> All right, and then we're just gonna put the soy milk on top. And then we're gonna stir that all in together with a spatula. So this is all in the way, so none of you can see where we're going. Can you see, Daniel? I can see. Okay. If it's too thick, you can add a little more soy milk. But I only have to do that if I get carried away of like measuring everything like so packed that. <laughs> you want to mix it as little as possible. Um, because the lemon juice causes the baking powder to react instantly. So you basically are gently folding it in with as little stirring as you can possibly do. Plus you don't want to break up all those cranberries. Now, if you're doing blueberries, they'll turn it purple because <laughs> all your blueberries will start disintegrating. <laughs> all right, that's it. We're waiting for the cake 
thing. Now you'll notice the recipe calls for a bundt cake pan, and as you can see, you don't have to use a bundt cake pan. Um, you can use this recipe. We'll make one three-quart casserole dish, nine by thirteen size. Um, it will also make two uh, eight or ten-inch cake pans. I think that's a ten-inch there. Um, the other one is an eight-inch. Um, it will make one nine-inch bundt cake pan, all the way to the top. Um, so you have a lot of variety of options that you can do with this recipe. So you can have a sheet, basically a nine by 13 sheet cake or a large bun cake. Thank you. This is the large bun cake size here. You want to see what it looks like. Um, I prefer the bun cake because it's the easiest to like put, drizzle the icing over, but um, I have honestly used all sizes for this recipe <laughs> and it works fine. Thank you, Matthew. Um, I do need a paper towel so I can get the last bit of water out of this before I spray it. And it looks like I need spray oil. <laughs> yep, he's getting his exercise today, poor guy. Make sure this is good and dry. Now I will say with this recipe, thank you very, very much. If I don't use a bundt cake pan, I put parchment paper in the bottom of my cake pans. Um, so you notice with the, the flat cake pan, I've got my parchment paper down here. Um, but with a bundt cake pan, I have never had to use parchment. And I found that parchment tends to wrinkle the bundt cake and you have a deformed sides. And so, um, Make sure you spray it well. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna use the new one. So I wanted to tell you one of my secrets and the applesauce is actually one of my secrets. Um, I have made this recipe for years and fought with it because it would fall. Uh, it would fall really bad in the middle, especially if I did like a nine by 13, that's when it fell the worst. And I fought with it so much. I tried adjusting like the flour. I tried adjusting so many things and it would still fall. And also it was a little bit dry. I always had to serve it with ice cream or fruit sauce or something to help keep it from being so dry. And uh, it's just really frustrating because it's like, I already had the maximum amount of chia seed and flax seed that I wanted to put in to replace the egg. And uh, it just, it was too dry. So finally, one day I thought, well, I'm just gonna try making an oil-free recipe just for the fun of it. So I replaced the oil that was in my recipe with all applesauce and it was moist. And I was like, I think I found the problem and it didn't fall. It held up beautifully. And so, but it was too heavy. So I thought, well, I'm gonna try experimenting with some oil and some applesauce. And that did the trick. So since then, since I've started using applesauce, I've never had a cake fall. I've never had to feel like I had to serve ice cream with it because it was so dry, I was sending you know, clouds of powder on everybody. And uh, uh, yeah, it's got less oil in it. So I mean, how much better can you get? So the applesauce is really one of the secret ingredients in this cake to make it taste really good. So what I do now is I let it sit for five to 10 minutes to let that flax seed activate. And while it's doing that, I preheat my oven to 400 degrees. And then I put this in the oven. And once I close the door, I turn the oven down to 350. Um, that way, your oven doesn't, the element doesn't come on immediately um, and burn the bottom of your cake. And it takes a good 55 to 60 minutes. Basically it takes a full hour to bake the cake unless your oven cooks hotter than mine. Then it might be done a few minutes sooner, but you'll know it's done when the sides start to pull away from the pan. You get like a quarter inch gap. Um, and of course your tooth comes out clean. So um, 
yeah, that's it. So, as far as frosting, I'm gonna rinse off my fingers. Give me a second. icing you're best to wait um, until the cake is completely cool before you put the icing on because always it'll melt um, we don't have that luxury today because the cakes just came out of the oven <laughs> but I'm gonna show you how I make them let's see I had two jars I thought I had two jars two empty half pint jars um, yes you found them Yay! Thank you. All right. So I make my icing in a little jar because it's the easiest. And then if you don't use it, you can seal it up and use it later. Um, and so I do not measure anything. <laughs> but um, basically, I put my jar about well it's a little too much about two-thirds full of powdered sugar um and then which one should i do i should do lemon because that way we can use it for both cakes i take my fresh lemon juice and i just put a tiny bit in and i need a let's see we'll use this little spoon to stir it here then i start stirring it And the secret is don't get too much in. <laughs> if your icing is too runny, you'll be in trouble. I know, <laughs> me too. <laughs> Put a little bit more in there. I'm gonna see if I can see down there and get a... Well, wait until it actually it looks like icing because you can't see anything right now. Now they say if you want the perfect looking icing, which I never have the patience for, you should sift your powdered sugar before you add the lemon juice. But of course, you know, I am not a perfectionist, so I don't think I've ever done that. Okay, so you can see it's a little bit too thick still. That's how I check it is by seeing how it pours. So I'm just gonna put a tiny bit more in there. And that looks perfect. I should have done more because we've got more than one cake we can put it on. Okay. All right, there's our icing. Should we put it on a hot cake and see what happens or should we just drizzle it on each person's piece when they're ready to eat it? <laughs> how warm is my, let me see how warm my butt cake is. Someone moved the gluten-free cake. Check, check, check. Uh, I don't think you should be the one because otherwise you'll go bounce, 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 and the cake will go bounce with oh, you. Let me <laughs> put it on the table behind Natalia. Thank you. There we go. These are both wheat. This one is lemon blueberry, and this one is cranberry orange. But they're both wheat. So what I do. Um, this here there's a bunch of clumps on top is I take a little bit of powdered sugar and 
I just gently sprinkle it on top. And I find if I do like a flicky motion, I can get more of that powdered sugar look as opposed to, now what they say to do is put it in a, one of those little strainer thingies, those fancy little, like a little shaker. yeah, you just shake it on top. I don't have one of those, so I use my fingers. But you can actually shake a fair bit on there. So I do that first, and then I just drizzle a tiny bit of icing over the top of it. But honestly, even if you don't want to use icing, you can serve it just like that. Looks like it just started to snow. <laughs> yep, it's snowing. Dry snow. Powder snow, right? Mm -hmm. That's what it does when it's really cold outside. I'm flicking powder at you. It looks more like flour. <laughs> it does look like flour, doesn't it? It looks prettier on a bunt cake than it does on a flat cake, but anyway. All right, I think the other one is. Now I can probably put a little bit on there. You just have to clean your, your counter off when you're done. Yeah. Because <laughs> it makes a mess on the counter. I might try the bunt cake one. Try and put icing on the bunt I'm gonna cake. I'm going to try and put it on the bunt cake, and then we can make a little bit more to put on each person's piece, because that way, because that, yours I know is too warm to put anything on. But we'll try the bunt cake and see what we get. So I purposely want it to drizzle a little bit, but because the cake is warm, it's probably going to drizzle a lot of it. See it over there. Huh? All right, what do you think? Does that look all right? I think that's the best we can do on a hot cake. <laughs> that's a nice close-up. <laughs> no, it doesn't that look good. <laughs> Looking pretty good. All right. Well, I know what I don't know what time it is, but I'm sure we've got overtime. Probably. Because we started very very late. <laughs> but I hope you guys have had fun. Uh, learned a few things about cake making and green pea soup. <laughs> what a combination, right? Uh, Could you put soup on it as a substitute no! for icing? No! Oh, okay. Daniel, don't. <laughs> We're about ready to kick you out. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't desecrate our cake. <laughs> We'd like an escort out of Russia. <laughs> All right, well... Um, are there any other questions? I don't know if any other comments have come through. That looks amazing from Charlotte. And Ariel, that was great. This was great. Ariel, if you want any and you're going to be in town tomorrow, let me know. I might save you some leftovers. If I don't eat it all. <laughs> but you better let me know or else there won't be any leftovers tomorrow. <laughs> so, well, I just want to wish all of you a Merry Christmas. And thank you for joining us, and thank you guys for being here, and for your help. <laughs> uh, this has been a lot of fun, and uh, next month, January, will be the third Tuesday of the month. I don't know what day it is, but uh, we're always third Tuesday of the month around 6 p.m. <laughs> Maybe not always on time, but we try. <laughs> we try. Try our best. So, Daniel, would you like to close us out in prayer? Sure. Then we're going to dig into cake. 
Off camera. <laughs> Off camera. <laughs> All right, let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you for this fun time that we've had this evening and for all this good food. Thank you for this time of year that we have to celebrate with friends and family and to celebrate the incarnation. I pray that you will uh, be with each one of us as we go to our homes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, before you turn off camera, should I cut a slice so they can you see should cut a slice. Like? You should cut a slice. We should at least make them hungry, right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to grab me a plate over there. We're gonna cut this one here wait, wait, that wait, wait, we just wait, wait. frosted. You are cutting the cake. Too bad, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Camera's gonna jump in. I thought you were gluten free. She wants me to hang out of that camera so she can get the first slice of cake. Of course. <laughs> did you take the slice out of that? This is my. Yeah, I did that. There you go. That's gluten. Look at that. Looking good. Don't worry, I have another knife. I'll cut the gluten free one. Looking good. All right. Victoria, is that yours? No. Okay. Daniel's? Nope. 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 Whose is it? It's the kids. No, they're gluten free. The kids? Oh, yeah, cut the other one for the kids. <laughs> All right. <laughs> all right. God bless you all. Merry Christmas. We'll see you next month. Have a good night. Thanks for joining.